I want to go to the cold, hard reality that the president of the United States knows and that the United States has a vaccination rate published out at 61 percent and a nation as beleaguered as Italy has a vaccination rate out at 85 percent. How far behind is the look that we seem to be very far behind? Well, you know, we we were one of the first countries to roll out vaccines um, in mass, and it seems like ever since we've started to roll out the vaccines, we've fallen behind other countries that are able to not only more effectively do it, but also convince their population about the benefits of vaccination um, in many different ways. And I think that as we move through these variants, we saw this with Alpha, we're now, we saw it with Delta, and now we're seeing all of the signs with Omicron of the same thing, which is these viruses are moving through the population. Vaccines are protecting us from severe disease, but it's the unvaccinated population that's really going to be the population that's going to put a stress onto our healthcare system because these viruses are spreading incredibly efficiently and they're going to find unvaccinated people and the disease in unvaccinated people is yet to be really determined how virulent this virus is. Dr. Pekosh, the uptick in cases that we're seeing in New York City in particular, is that the Omicron wave actually happening here? really difficult to differentiate uh, between what's happening with a Delta surge, which certainly was going on across many parts of the U.S. Uh, just after Thanksgiving, and what Omicron is doing. Um, our sequencing efforts here in the U.S. lag behind a little bit the efforts that are going on in the U.K. and South Africa, so we're not hearing about the Omicron cases as quickly as we should. It's quite possible that um, the surges that we're seeing now are con contributed to by Omicron because the data coming out of Europe is showing that this virus is at least as good as Delta, if not better than Delta, at transmitting in populations that have some immunity even. How important, Dr. Pekosh, is the psychological impact of a lot of people who got vaccinated, they did exactly what they thought that they should do, and they're still getting sick. Everybody knows somebody like that as this Omicron variant starts to spread. How much does that discourage people from both getting vaccinated and from listening to health officials by saying, you'll be protected? if you just take these measures. Yeah, the, it's important to get the message of primarily protection from severe disease is what we're seeing these vaccines doing quite well. And that has actually held true even with Alpha, even with Delta, and now with Omicron as well, too. So I think the realistic expectation for people is that COVID-19 is looking more and more like seasonal influenza. The vaccines are going to prevent some level of infection, but not all. But they're going to make a really big dent in terms of the severe disease. And that is probably where six months, a year from now, we're going to really be settling in in terms of managing this disease. Vaccines will limit cases and disease severity. We'll have treatments like antivirals that also will limit disease severity. And we'll be dealing with this as a virus similar to influenza. We're not at that place yet, but that's where we will be in a few months. And there is an element, though, in the here and the now that we've heard from Chris Whitty, the chief medical officer of England, about the worry that eventually hospitalizations may well run much higher than they have done previously because we're about to come together as families, because once again, we're exhausted from the mental strain of all of this. We want to be together. We're going to put the most vulnerable at risk. Meanwhile, the U.S. very much standing by its stance that they want to see families together for the festive period. What do you make of that risk at the moment? Well... It, there is a way to manage this risk. It does take engagement and it does take effort. Uh, testing is an important part of this. Uh, the rapid testing and some and other forms of testing like saliva testing are really good methods to make to keep monitoring for infections. Um, mm. Making sure that that you understand your gatherings and your workplaces and maintain some level of social distancing there is also important. There are ways to manage the risks of, uh, of transmission right now. But what's important to note is more cases will equal more hospitalizations. And so we have to really make an effort to limit cases because irrespective of whether Omicron is more or less virulent than Delta, if it causes more cases than Delta, it will cause more severe cases than Delta. Talk to me quickly about why I can walk into a library, into a pharmacy anywhere in the UK and get a lateral flow test and in fact have many ahead of the Christmas period to be able to ensure that we're remaining safe. But is it right that it feels much harder to do that in the United States and for what reason is that? 
It is most definitely harder to do that in the United States. I think there wasn't an emphasis early on about using these at-home tests, and uh, and it wasn't a real understanding of how to use these at-home tests effectively. Um, other countries have moved forward with that and are able to use these tests effectively. I think we're starting to learn that here in the U.S., but now it becomes a, basically a supply and demand uh, problem. Now people are trying to get these these tests here, but we simply don't have the supply to meet the demand that's here right now. I assume that will change with some of the pandemic plans that President Biden's administration is putting forward. But for the short term, mm -hmm. people are really desperate for these tests and not being able to get them in many parts of the United States.